All right, guys, we are back for another ESPN MIC highlight reel. So what we are going to do today is we are going to talk about the week. Every single week, I try to provide value to you guys to show what Alex did, what Bao did, what the members were doing, what the team was doing, what the community was doing. And this is MIC in a nutshell, guys. Just really quick, I have it at the bottom right corner. But if you have any questions, you know, after this, you know, this video and you're interested in MIC, guys, you can always text my business line at 213-458-5996. Seven. We juggle a lot of hats, no pun intended, because I'm always wearing a hat at MIC, but uh, we do a lot of back-end work. So if you guys need any help, I am the guy to contact. You can also email me at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Again, if you want some more info and later, I'll show you how to book a call. But guys, let's dive right in. So this week, the market is finally picking re like really back up in, in small cap land in the last couple of days, especially. But let's go to Monday as we're going to tackle the 10th through the 14th, obviously Monday through Friday. So I thought this was really cool. Alex didn't share too many charts this week. I think he was traveling and actually Bao was traveling too, but Bao is lives, eats, and breathes posting. I think Alex was a little bit sidetracked this week. So I have a couple vows charts on Thursday and Friday. And uh, I love this lesson, what Alex was talking about on Monday, guys. Check this out. As a short bias trader, we are looking for a death candle. And, you know, always as well is a stuff move. But what he said right here is a death candle. You know, essentially, sometimes they're the same thing. Then shorting the bounce with a stop above the death candle. Here's a visual example on JFBR, which as you guys can see right here, it's so, so, so important, guys, to get these big death candles and then hitting the bounce and then risking the top of those death candles or if the top, you know, whether it's an intraday top or it's a pre-market top is right around that death candle. Obviously, if it's super close, you're kind of just going to use that as risk. So this was just a really good lesson from Alex. We've talked about this for years and years and years within our webinars, within our teachings, and this is a staple of MIC teachings. So let's see what the members are doing. I got some member charts for Monday. I love, love, love what Rockmon is doing. He's got a really good process these days. I just want to shout him out. If he's shorting, he must be watching my webinars because he's using the outermost line. And then if he's longing, he's really good at longing and catching those supports. So this is an example of, you know, catching the supports, selling the rips until it doesn't work. Really good job. He's, he's not, you know, getting in right here and chasing the tops. He's waiting for this to come back down to a nice support, getting in, already cushioned from before. I love that. Uh, Louis Buckets, really, really good cut right here. Every now and then, guys, your biggest win for the day is sometimes going to be risk management and taking a small L. So, you know, Tom Diesel is really good at that, one of our moderators. And I, I, I'll, I'll shout him out next time. But, you know, this time I just kind of, you know, I'll probably provide some charts or whatever. But the whole point of what I was talking about with Tom Diesel and his charts is he is very good at milking and extracting what we call meat on the bone. And then when he's wrong, and I probably should have put one of those charts up there, but when he's wrong, a PL chart, it's like negative 100 bucks. He's really good at risk management. So guys, he's always willing to make five to one, 10 to one, 50 to one. But at the times that he's wrong, he cuts it for a couple hundred bucks. He's really good at that. And this is an example like that. And uh, Tom Diesel teaches this daily. A lot of our moderators teach this and Louis Buckets did a really good job of that. This looks identical to what Tom Diesel usually does. Uh, that's why I wanted to shout him out. Hooper X on CDLX. I love this, guys. Where did the stock fail before? That is your point of resistance. I would definitely, definitely, definitely argue against getting in so early, but the scales are really good. You want to be at those outer levels. So sometimes I have a little bit of a critique in the shout out, but I just want to make sure you guys are learning the proper methods and the way to go. Love this outer line catch into resistance levels for Antonio. And then, dude, caught the offering. So... If, you know, look, that doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's a lot of fun and uh, well done. <laughs> you know, that's all I can say to that. They're, they're really fun when, when you catch them. It's like a water slide. Uh, guys, Tuesday, I don't have a p &L for Monday, but Tuesday for Alex, $419. Nothing monumental for, I don't even think he traded Monday. That's what it was. Nothing monumental for me today. Been feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, <laughs> take a number, bro. Me too. Uh, so I sized down and just focused on JFBR and ZFox side plays. In trading, you should only be sizing up when the opportunity is there and when you feel up to it. I did not feel 100% today, so I sized down. And guys, that's another really good lesson from multi-seven-figure year trader Alex. You know, he's not kidding when he says you don't want to push when the iron isn't hot and you want to push when the iron is hot. So, you know, c coming on a couple of those charts, guys, I actually do have 
um, talking about those, I do have some bow examples. And this is really cool because check this out. So JFBR and Z Fox, really good examples of fighting a stock and or not fighting a stock and just waiting for backside. And this is what I love. So I just wanted to pull up Z Fox really quick, guys. This was day one. Bow was definitely a little bit early pre-market, as you can see. You know, a little bit early, just again on that, you know, that kind of ramp back up off VWAP. All you got to do is wait for backside as a short seller. It's so much easier. So while I know Bao did a good job here and mitigated, you know, probably what I would assume a small loss pre-market out of all this, that's the easier money. This is the really easy money right here on something like um, JFBR. So when something is, and I'll just kind of pull it up real quick, guys. JFBR on the, what day was it? The 11th. Uh, let me just scroll back for this. Yep, here we are. So we're coming into day two. And the thing is, guys, it actually, here's the pattern right here. It's not even really day one or day two. This is the pattern. When you have a stock that's up pre-market and then it's way under VWAP and it's kind of like way far from highs and kind of broken, it's these backside pops. It's these micro strengths into the, you know, the, the macro trend is pretty much broken pre-market going into the day. You know it's day two, so that's already an amplifier. That's already a coupling factor of the fact that you're probably going to want to short this thing. And momentum, you know, is just kind of dissipating out of the balloon so to speak you know the air is coming out of the balloon and the whole thing about this is you want these pop back up to these resistance levels and that is a backside move so just really well done but as you guys can see that's the difference between you know just look again like you can fight these things if you need to I'm not going to stop you from fighting I recommend that if you're newer or you're a little bit more you know on the new side or the green side guys wait for the easier setups like LMAC did on JFBR you know waiting for that pop up because there's so much pre-market overhead and it's you know the deviation under VWAP is so much back up to a resistance line like guys those are the easy trades so it's always kind of like are you going down road one you know the road very much traveled and everybody wanting to hit everything or are you going down road number two the road that's less traveled which takes a lot more discipline it's such an easier trade everybody wants what's hot they want the hot stock. You guys got to go for the easier ones. Now, when I when I showcase something like Bao's chart on, I'll go back for one second. When I showcase Bao's Z Fox chart, Bao has earned this, guys. You cannot be doing this when you're new. Bao has learned this. He's been doing 20 years of this, so he's fine. And he's a veteran, 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 veteran. You know, he's your veteran's veteran. So he can get away with that and do that. But when you're new, always go the road less traveled. And that's what math is doing. And coming off a full March green month, now he's fully green in April. Knock on wood. So just a really good job. Uh, Rockmon VKTX, exactly what I was talking about earlier, guys. He's either using outer lines for short or he's hitting those dips, you know, the supports, those supports for long selling the rips. Really good job, as I was exclaiming on Monday. Uh, $1,800 for J Trades. I love this. My runners are ripping. My best day, my de my best day in the past two years. He saw that you know Bitcoin was breaking out. Mara, you know Riot, blockchain miners, etc. Awesome job and a way to look at you know sympathy runners and and sentiment in a market and knowing your sectors and it's very important, guys. So you know just take note of things like that. So Hooper X, I wanted to showcase another example like Bow Z Fox, guys. Front side, leave it front side. Like here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you not to do it as front side shorts require front side covers. And if you're quick enough and talented enough to do it, you can work your way out of situations and still make money. It's just, as he said himself, here's the easy money. Just wait for the tops, wait for the death candle turns, wait for the sentiment shifts, wait for the offerings, wait for the major drops. And you're just going to save yourself a lifetime, guys, a lifetime of, uh, you know, of stress, stress-free trading. And here's the thing. I just want to pull up one more time. Sorry. I closed that out a little too soon. Guys, that's the turn right there. So when something is going up and up and up and it's deviated or VWAP or it's parabolic, all you got to do is wait for a massive stuff or a massive death candle. And then you can start attacking. If something doesn't, you know, hit your liking pre-market or, um, you know, in the intraday open that's already broken into a resistance line. But if something is, you know, strong and hot chick and front side, like wait for the turn. It's just going to be so much more easier on you guys. It's just going to, ah, you're just going to alleviate so much freaking headache, man. I'm telling you, I've done years of it. Plus 15K sol on Wednesday, solid PL day, but I gave back a ton of profits, overstaying my welcome on Lucy. Actually, it was one of the few times, guys, where Alex was on the webinar and we were talking about it. 
and he was like, I just overstayed. So like, if I pulled up Lucy for you guys, you'll see that Alex traded it perfectly in the morning, but just got a little bit too patient. So it is what it is, but traded it well in the morning. As he said, got greedy and wanted more, ended up giving profits, on, giving back profits on it. But CYTO traded this well with the watch list plan as per usual. Wish I located more. That's always the case when you, when you win, you wish you had more. Then when you lose, you're like, I had too much. But 15K, oh man, just so fun. Uh, let me pull up CYTO for you guys. One sec. All right, CYTO, we are, what was that? That was, uh, what was the date? I always go by dates. That was the 12th. Yeah, yeah, that was the 12th. That's what I thought. So guys, this is the day right here. You know, that was the, what was confusing me right here. This is not a full day, guys. This is just an after hours run right here. So this was coming into the next day. Alex did, it. let's see what he was saying on the watch list. I'll, I'll actually read that out for you. Uh, CYTO, looking, let me just organize. Looking for a bounce towards 240, right here, 250 and 260. Literally, per guys, it's so perfect off the watch list. I actually have to draw it for you. Like, look at how perfect this is. 10, 10% increments, guys. This is the key. You always want to do this when there's not a crazy amount of range. And especially as it relates to, you know, resistance lines and, and like topping points and really key, you know, areas that are key resistance areas that on the way back up, it should fail. So that's your scale zone. It did exactly what he wanted. Alex did, you know, perfect, added in the resistance, added to a winner and covered late after patting himself early. So just very patient on this, very calculated, very, you know, this was great. Alex was covering in here and he just did a really, really good job. A really nice catch. Caught the whole meat of the move. Caught the whole ribeye, man. Seriously. Um, let's see what the members are doing. I think a couple members were catching CYTO as well. Hooper X, S O U N. I love this. Uh, right in the outer lines, guys, and hole and half dollar three. Really nice job. Another one from him, GCTK. Present, um, Presets hit, so basically fantasy orders is what he's saying, and covered on a fail. That's what you want to do. Make your scalp, make your money, back to your day job. Lucy wanted the dump before zombie hour, all good. Hit where the stock failed before. I love this. Really good job, David. And a beautiful scale. A little tad early. If you just follow the watches, you'd be up here. But honestly, it is a beautiful scale on um, the path makers on CYTO. But really nice job, guys. Just remember not to give into that FOMO. You know, the thing is, Here's the thing, guys, on something like this, every now and then, like the million dollar setup that we talk about a lot is when something is super heavily deviated under VWAP. But remember, one of the only things that is predicated on this not working is when there's really no range for it to come back down at VWAP. So that's why you need the outer lines of what Alex was saying, 240, 250, and 260. I talk about this a lot. If this had a ton of room to come down and still a lot of meat on the bone, if it would have touched VWAP and then failed, but this thing kind of gave back so much that you, when, when something gives back so much of its gains, guys, over a day one, I'll just say it like this, a pre-market, a day one, a day two, a day three, a day seven, for God's sakes, when when something has given back a massive amount of gains or at least a lot of the meat or a lot of the range, you need a big, big bounce or a dead cat bounce. So if you guys are like, hey, you know, this usually looks like what Joe and Tosh are talking about in the million dollar setup right here. Let me hit this at VWAP. Sometimes it works, guys, but it doesn't usually work when there's not a lot of range to come down. And as you guys can see, there's not a lot of range at VWAP. So where's this thing really going to come back down? You know what I mean? So you need that kind of dead cat bounce and that big bounce to outer lines resistance points so you can get that meat and get that range back so that you could take it back down if you're short selling. So that's kind of one of the keys there. And again, no strategy works every single time. You know, if this was, you know, trading is as much art as it is a science, guys. If this, if every pattern or every strategy worked literally every single time, then we'd have mansions and mega yachts and solid gold toilets and for private islands. Like, God, it just doesn't work like that. So you have to do the best of your ability. So if you're getting in at VWAP up to the outer resistance line, which we teach, then this would have played exactly like uh, the path, you know, um, I'm sorry, what was that member's uh, tagline? 
tag name, the Pathmakers. That would be exactly what the Pathmakers did. So a little bit early, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but just know that if there's a lot of meat or a lot of range to come down, it's gonna be so much more seamless and streamlined on that particular setup. So just wanted to make that very clear. 6,300 on Thursday, Alex did a very good job. Very happy to have voided this, the crazy stocks like CXAI and GFAI today. Market is heating back up and stock selection is more important than ever, ever guys. I can't, you know, we can't stress that enough. AUUD, CYTO were the lowest stress opportunities today. 6,300 bucks, great job, Alex. I think I have a couple trades from uh, Bao because Alex didn't post them, but let me show you guys this. So again, this is what I love. Bao was hitting OSHA. Wait for the tops, guys, and then these are the pops that you want to hit. And then again, where the stock fell before. Just a beautiful job from Bao. And then again, another one. AUUD, stress for It's so broken. It's so broken, guys. So these pops back up. Like, where's it going to go, right? So really key, right back in a resistance level. You know, I love it. Scaling upwards of probably the whole and a half dollar, you know, 150. Uh, really, really nice job on Bao's end. So just, you know, educating the members and guiding the members every single day, every single week. So let's see what the members are doing on Thursday. Hooper X, another great one, right where the stock fell before. Great freaking job. Lucy, five line fail. Love it. Uh, CXAI for Daniel. This is a long, really, really nice long, guys. I love that you guys are not chasing breakouts and, you know, hitting, you know, on these like little parabolic strength. Like wait for these things. Guys, the, the trend is strong, right? If the trend is strong, wait for it to pull back to a really key support and or coupling factor of VWAP, whole and a half dollar lines, things things of that nature, you know? Again, Rockmon proving exactly what I've been eyeing in his process, doing a really good job at these parabolics, covering at outer lines. Uh, really, really good job, man. Right at outer line shorts and covering the dips. Nice job on OSHA. Uh, Travers caught this, love this. Pretty much probably a break-even trade right here or a small win, and then a really nice uh, recovery right there and a great, great win on the long side. Pathmakers, really, really good job. Where's the stock fail before? Outer lines, that's exactly where you want to be on IDAI. Really good job, guys. And then today, guys, the stock, I mean, the God, you know, the freaking, I'm telling you right now, man, stock market's heating up, especially small cap land, so let's go. 162 uh, $16,200, 16.2K, solid plans laid out in the watch list again every single day. IDAI plan was a short 450s and INPX short came after the death candle in the morning. Happy to have avoided the hot stocks. MRAI and PTPI today will be very focused coming into next week, guys. So 16.2, uh, I think I have a couple valve charts. Let's see what was going on. So, you know, MRAI, about doing exactly what he does best. Wait for a top, hit the pop, that's the top. Hit the pop, really good job. Where the stock fell before, that's where he wants to be all day. You can get away with these under VWAP if it's super deviated, but you gotta be quick. But really, you know, where are these tops and that's where you wanna be. Call it channel, call it outer resistance line, call it whatever you need, but be where a stock fell before and that's gonna be the best magnet or area to re-enter. So really good job on ALR, ALLR, all R. <laughs> and then uh, it just just awesome. You know, like again, guys, went here, I'll pull this one up specifically. I'll pull this one up. So double A W double L R. <laughs> Funny way to say it. But uh yeah, guys, as you can see, like this is what I'm talking about, right? So stock puts, you know, this is basically a pump and dump pumps up out of nowhere, random, no pre-market. Like, what? where the hell did this come from, right? Dumps, sheep everywhere. You want to get back up to these, like, wait for these outer resistance lines, guys. These these things kind of move, right? Especially, like, if it's a bump and dump. Like, these things are going to move, so you don't want to be down. it. Like, there's no range to come down. So, again, this is why I wanted to pull this one up. When something gives back all of its gains, you need a nice pop, not this little shit. You need a nice pop. So, that's what this is. That's the best this is going to give, especially on a pump and dump. It's It wasn't not like CYTO on that day that I was talking about because that was a stock with pre-market and people were still chasing that up. This is people that are stuck, guys. This is big shorts covering, and then this is people who are stuck that just want out. So this is not going to pull out. We, you know, this is just going to like, bleh. It's just going to like, poof, it's, you know, a little cloud of smoke. But it is what it is. Uh, you are going to find personalities in stock charts and price action as you do this for a long time and you're gonna figure out how they move. INPX for David, really nice job. Sick off the watch list, trimmed one third. I love it where the stock fell before, hit it there. Beautiful job. 
Uh, Dario, solid, man. I-D-A-I. -I. Caught it. Nice. Again, Dario, really nice job, man, on MVLA. Beautiful, easy, stress-free backside trade. Where the stock fell before for Rockmon PTPI. I'm shouting him out. He takes the crown this uh, ESPN highlight reel, guys. As I said, from Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and we've showed so many examples of what he's doing. Outer lines, if he's shorting, it's very calculated. It's very curated. It's very precise. He's moving very tactically, like I talk about in all my webinars. And then alongside, he's waiting for those really good dips with coupling factors, and his process is absolutely rock solid for Rockmon, no pun intended, but yes, pun intended. Um, Momo trades, a uh, nice $4,800 day. We don't showcase P&Ls too much, guys, as it's just, you know, the members are making money, the mods are making money. It, 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 that's all relative. Like, like money in P&Ls is so relative to each trader. It's actually like so boring and uninteresting, but every now and then it's just cool to see, you know? Great posts, you guys don't have to share these if you don't want. We wanna see consistency first more than anything and make sure you're understanding process so you can do this the rest of your life, but great. You know, if you wanna showcase like a really nice day, like 4,800, great job, Momo, awesome job. But I'm more interested in your charts. Uh, Travers, CNSP, awesome, awesome end of the day catch squeezer. Uh, he's a long trader, man caught it and piecemealed out as he does. That's his bread and butter. Really, really, really clean job, man. I, I, I get that's, that's just beautiful guys. Check this out. So this, that's kind of all the charts. That's kind of what happened for the week. This is our Slack community. This is our chat room. Just kind of wanted to show this. Uh, every single morning, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll the watch list channel like I showed you, you know, timestamp in order, guys, from the day. You know, this is what time-based trading, guys. This is what educated trading is. This is what, you know, day-based trading is. This is what edge-based trading is. This is what we do in a nutshell to make sure you guys are up to speed every single day, paying attention, making sure you're on your grind and making money and, and being consistent and, and, and being profitable and making this a, you know, a, hopefully a career for most of you and taking it seriously. And if you treat it like a career, you'll get career results, guys. And if you treat it like a hobby, you're gonna get hobby results. So treat it like a career, get in the watch list every single day. Then get in the main trading chat where we take the watch list and educate and really show what's going on and give you warnings and bow educating and showing what to do and Alex in the morning specifically and funny memes and gifts every now and then as a community. But this is what you need to be paying attention to. This is what you're paying for. This is going to make you better. We have a large cap and options rooms, guys. If you're not a small cap trader, which is the main trading chat, we have a swing trading room. Um, whatever you're looking to learn, we got it, but check this out. We have an after hours channel too. I love this because I'm a health nut. Investor Jack is making ginger, lemon, maple syrup, turmeric, cracked pepper shots. I used to do that as well. That's awesome. Uh, so guys, share your journey. Like, <laughs> and Oren's the opposite. He's just drinking acai beer. <laughs> Point is, guys, is share, network, make friends, have fun. Uh, you know, post, post your cows in your backyard, post your food, post cars for sale. Uh, check this out, Investor Jack. Any vet fans got a buddy selling in 2016, 50? Like, that's cool. This is what the community is, guys. You never know who's got something that you need. So make friends. Get out there and make friends. Like, that's the point of the community. Um, let me go to the website real quick and show you guys a couple things. This is myinvestingclub.com, guys. Check this out. Three things I really want to make, um, you know, I, I just kind of want to put in your focus immediately, especially if you're listening to this video and you're not a member of our company or our community or our club. And the first thing is, is guys, get a free training. I, I cannot stress this enough. This is so important. Just put your name, put your email. You're going to get a one hour free training. Then second, once you do that, guys, book a call. So, you know, 213-458-5997 is my line that you can randomly text. Please don't randomly call it. Book an actual time slot. Go to my Google Calendar. We can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, it's myself. It's not like a chat GPT or AI bot, <laughs> voice bot. It's actually me. I don't like you know, give a voice box to Travers or anything. It's actually me. Uh, and we'll just make sure that you guys have confidence in MIC if you do so and, uh, and see you want to be a part of this. And I know there's a lot of number crunches out there. So if you guys want to see what your main educator, Alex Demiz is doing, he's doing pretty well, guys. So the point is, uh, I don't think there's anybody on the internet that is doing anything remotely valuable 
and the actual amount of resource and value that we're doing at my investing club guys if you want to learn day trading there's nowhere else like we teach small caps big caps options and swing trading and to kind of showcase that a little bit more we have the last thing i wanted to show you right here a video library list with endless amounts of content uh you could type in a search you know keyword search right here first red day fomo you know big losses things like that revenge trading and we're gonna have videos on it that it will siphon out for you we have a full roadmap from the accelerator course drop down to getting started in our curriculum drop down to then going to phase study guide drop down which is monstrous and then we have things like alex's live trades you have to be a lifetime member to view this so if you want to upgrade or you want to sign up for a lifetime member or um or upgrade in general, annual, whatever, uh, just text my line or book a call or just DM me and chat at tbradley90. But this is exclusive to, to lifetime members. And what this is, is Alex will tr you know record his screens live and then he will play them back for you guys with audio commentary after the fact. Uh, but it is a live trade, which you guys can see executions and PL and all that, which is really cool. And Alex showcases that like a $67,000 live trade, $900, 5,100, 12,000. You know, it fluctuates, but uh, it's super cool. It's super hands-on. So... You know, that's our community, guys. I think it's really beneficial that you guys book a call, get the information that you need. And as per uh, ritual or as per tradition, let's, I don't have Monday, guys. I don't know. I don't think Alex traded Monday. I'm almost 100%, but let's see what he made for the week. So $400, uh, what, 15,000 plus 6,300. Usually I could pretty much just do this in my head, but we'll just do it for the sake of the calculator app so you guys can see. Guys, $38,000 a week, and that's before rebates. That's literally before probably a $5,000, you know, check cut back to them from Success Trader. So, guys, April 25th, we have a live trading event where Bao and Alex are going to trade live, screen share everything from the morning, make it a watch list to the end of the day. Uh, it is exclusive for annual lifetime members and get access to this. Guys, to showcase exactly what's getting Alex a $40,000 a week. We spare no expense. We show you everything. We don't hide anything. We don't hoard information at MIC, guys. Everything that is getting Alex here, we're going to show you. And we are doing a live stream on April 25th. So DM me, text me if you need info. But uh, you got to get an MIC and you got to be an annual or lifetime member. Guys, this has been an ESPN MIC highlight reel. Uh, wanted to showcase the week, and I am signing off, and I will catch you guys next week. So text me if you have any questions at 213-458-5997 and go to myinvestingclub.com to book a call with yours truly. See you guys.